What is the dependency inversion principle? Does it really mean we simply flip the dependency between two modules? But how can we do this in software? And why is this principle so important for your designs? Let's find out. Imagine a simple blocking software, which of course allows creating, editing and reading articles. It also provides a simple full text search and a home feed showing recommended readings for each user. In order to realize these functionalities, we also need some database to store the articles. And of course we use our favorite ORM library, because no one wants to handcraft SQL statements in 2023, right? Of course our application needs a web frontend, so we pick our favorite web framework, which allows us to set up the web UI in no time. The articles are edited and stored in Markdown, so we also need a renderer, which converts the raw articles into a structured HTML document, which can then be nicely styled in the UI using CSS. Notice that with this simple and naive design, we have created a traditional layered architecture, which builds an application on top of existing modules. And this is where the dependency inversion principle comes into the picture, which states, high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules. Both should depend on abstractions. And abstractions should not depend upon details, details should depend upon abstractions. But what does that mean? In this context, high-level modules refers to those modules which implement the more abstract, higher-level functionality of our application, which are the business rules. In contrast, low-level modules refers to those modules which implement specific details of the application, the building blocks used to realize the higher-level functionality in a concrete context. And what about abstractions and details? Details are those aspects of a software design which are needed to make the application work in a certain context, but which are neither essential to its business value nor to its identity. Abstractions, on the other hand, are the business rules, the domain abstractions and other abstract concepts which define the business value and form the identity of the application. That having clarified, if we now compare our naive design with the dependency inversion principle, we have to recognize that our design entirely violates the dependency inversion principle. Our high-level modules do depend on the low-level modules. And our abstractions do depend on the details. But why is this a problem? To answer this question, let's answer this question first. Where is the business value of the application located in our design? As the high-level modules contain the business rules, which solve a business problem, clearly these high-level modules contain most of the business value of the application. Concluding this, do we really want our high-level modules to depend on details which are not nearly as relevant to our application? Imagine this. As initial data storage setup, we have decided for Entity Framework Core and some SQL database. And because we had to build up the application fast and we wanted to keep it all simple, we made the DB context of Entity Framework Core the primary API of our data access layer, which is now used in all high-level modules. But later it turns out that hosting our blocking software in the cloud, based on the proprietary storage solution provided by the cloud provider, would reduce the hosting cost of our application drastically. In our design, replacing one data access implementation by another, which is supposed to be a less relevant detail, would impact all our high-level modules. Or imagine this, a market analysis reveals that providing a native Android app additionally to our browser UI would increase the market acceptance of our application significantly. Supporting the operating system native frontend libraries requires a complete redesign of our low-level rendering module. And again, changes in a module, which is supposed to be a lesser relevant detail of the application, create severe impact on our high-level modules. So how can we use existing libraries and low-level modules without depending on those? We need to invert the dependency. Instead of allowing the low-level module to define the API through which a high-level module can interact with it, we shift the ownership of the contract to the high-level module. The high-level module now defines which functionality it requires from any implementation of this interface. It not only defines which APIs are needed, but it also defines the data structures passed through this interface. By this, the high-level module defines an abstraction, which now both the high-level module and the low-level module depend on. To apply this concept to our sample application, we first create an interface which sufficiently abstracts the data access layer by defining the needs of the high-level module. If multiple high-level modules depend on the same low-level module, 
these high-level modules need to agree on a common interface, which then would probably become an even better abstraction of the detail encapsulated in a low-level module. As the ownership of this interface is now shared among the high-level modules, this interface will be placed in a dedicated package. Looking at the direction of the dependencies again, we see that the specific data access technology has now become a true detail, which can be replaced without any impact on the high-level modules anytime. Now, although such a design makes it easier to reuse high-level modules in other contexts, at the same time, it has a significant drawback. Low-level modules are now coupled to the high-level modules as the interfaces implemented by the low-level modules are defined in those high-level modules, which makes it harder, if not even impossible, to reuse the low-level modules in other contexts, for example in other applications. To resolve this problem, we apply the adapter pattern. First, we create an interface for the low-level module, which is intended to allow reusing the low-level module in multiple contexts. We then create a new class, the adapter, and we put it into a separate module. The adapter then uses the interface of the low-level module to implement the interface of the high-level module. The adapter would also convert between data structures defined by the low-level module and data structures defined by the high-level module. This design certainly adds a bit of overhead and in some cases may even have some performance impact, but it keeps the high-level modules independent from the details and at the same time allows an easy reuse of the low-level modules in other applications. How can we apply this approach to our sample application? Suppose we want to reuse our markdown to HTML renderer in other applications as well. And at the same time, we want the high-level modules of this application to be independent from this detail so that we could also support, for example, an Android native UI as suggested earlier. To achieve this, we keep the low-level interface of the renderer and add a new abstraction defined by the high-level modules. We then create the adapter in a dedicated module, which then uses the interface of the renderer to implement the interface defined by the high-level modules. Simple. It almost seems to be a bit too simple, isn't it? And in fact, we have to have a closer look at one particular aspect. When inverting dependencies and decoupling modules, we so far talked about and simply introduced interfaces. But actually, the dependency inversion principle talks about abstractions. An interface, of course, is an abstraction of a concrete implementation. But just defining an interface is often not enough to fully apply the dependency inversion principle and truly decouple modules. For example, an interface exposing conceptual details is not an appropriate abstraction. This class represents a document containing some content, but it also has a file name property and so exposes the conceptual detail that the document is stored in a file system. A more abstract solution would be to use a URI and to rename the property to location, which assigns a generic address to the document but does not expose anything about the storage technology. And if an address is not necessary in the given context, an even more abstract solution would be to just provide a name or an ID property and some API to access the content of the document via a stream. So generally speaking, finding an appropriate abstraction is more than just defining an interface. It is about finding or inventing a more abstract representation of a concrete aspect. This also applies to data structures used by this interface. A concrete aspect can often be abstracted in various different ways. An appropriate abstraction depends on a specific context or domain. An appropriate abstraction ideally tries to anticipate future changes to some extent, which definitely doesn't make it easier to find or invent one. So what does this mean for our sample application? How could an appropriate abstraction of the renderer module look like? How could we abstract rendering HTML on the one hand and rendering an article for an Android native UI on the other hand? One approach could be to define some data structures representing the abstract structure of a document. We could have a document type which has a title and a list of sections. A section could have a headline and a list of paragraphs. A paragraph could consist of a list of text blocks. A text block could be plain text with optional formatting, or a link, or an image. The actual renderer interface would then accept such a document and the specific renderer implementation could then do the needful to render the document for the specific target device. This design would not only provide an appropriate abstraction to the existing and already requested renderers, but would also already anticipate 
possible future changes to some extent. Now that we have discussed in depth what the dependency inversion principle is, why it is an important design principle and how to apply it to some concrete design, there is still one question left. Are there any drawbacks of applying the dependency inversion principle to a design? And as always, there is no such thing as a free lunch, so there are a few things to keep in mind. It can be quite some effort to develop the appropriate abstraction for a given context. And of course, this abstraction needs to be maintained additionally to the actual modules. When applying the dependency inversion principle together with the adapter pattern, the conversion between the different data structures could impact performance. Applying the dependency inversion principle with or without the adapter pattern is probably not the most intuitive design for many developers and may so be considered as increase in complexity. And this brings us to the very last question of this video. So when should you use the dependency inversion principle? Me personally, I tend to start applying the dependency inversion principle rather early in the development phase of a project, definitely for third-party libraries. Some developers might consider this as over-engineering, but I made the experience that finding the right point in time to apply the necessary refactoring to invert the dependencies is not as easy as it may seem. Me personally, I have observed far too often that this point was missed and all the issues the dependency inversion principle would address started to emerge in the codebase. Nevertheless, if I would have to give a recommendation, here are my thoughts. Apply the dependency inversion principle to third-party libraries, specific technologies and external services if your team has three developers or more, or your codebase is bigger than 10k lines of code, or your project has an expected lifetime of more than 12 months. Apply the dependency inversion principle to your own low-level modules if multiple teams are working in the codebase, or the project spans multiple source control repositories, or multiple applications are based on the low-level modules. What would be your recommendations for applying the dependency inversion principle? Let me know in the comments. See you in the next video.